Hey everybody, in 2020 my strategy for the channel was to buy parts for a PC build, review a couple of components, do a build video, sell the PC, and then repeat the process all over again. I was pretty successful at this in 2020, and I was able to make and sell four PC builds, which I was pretty happy about. I want to continue doing this in 2021, but due to the insanity that is the PC parts availability, I have altered my strategy a little. Instead of buying parts when I come up with the build idea, I've been buying them in advance as components become available or if they're on sale, and I've saved quite a bit doing that. As such, I have quite a few motherboards, hard drives, RAM kits, and even a couple of cases waiting to be assembled into a new PC. Because I want to make sure these various parts work, I decided it's time to put together a test bench. This way I can install a motherboard or RAM and see if it's working. Long story short, today I'm going to go over the case I'll be using for my test bench, and my choice may just surprise you. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. This is the Cooler Master Half XB Evo Land Box, and as you can see, it isn't your standard looking case compared to what is currently available. Originally released in 2014, it is considered a legacy product on Cooler Master's website, however, you still can buy it new for $104.99 USD. While researching test benches, I found the Half XB Evo to be competitively priced compared to some of the more popular quality open test benches available, which are priced anywhere from $150 to over $200. Enough of that, let's dive in and see what this case has to offer. The majority of the Half XB Evo is made from thick steel, while the front face frame is plastic. There is also mesh all over for good airflow. This is a half case after all. The case is all black and the metal is painted with what looks like a textured powder coat finish. There are two versions of the Half XB Evo, one with a mesh top panel and another with an acrylic window. As you can see, I opted for the mesh. Because it's not your standard mid-tower case, you're going to want to make sure you have plenty of room on your desk for the Half XB Evo, and its dimensions are as follows. It's 423 millimeters deep, 442 millimeters wide, and has a height of 330 millimeters. Each panel and even the removable motherboard tray is held on by thumb screws, making it easy to add or replace parts, which is great. You can even remove the side panels without needing to remove the top panel first. Unfortunately, none of the thumb screws are captive, which is a real shame, so do keep track of them. The front panel is held on by a total of seven plastic tabs, three on either side, and then one at the top center. I do have concerns that these tabs will give out and break over time. I also wonder if they'll still be easy to get at when there's a full build installed in the case. The case is very sturdy with the panels on or off, and each panel, except for the front, is made from thick steel, and they barely flex. The side panels also have handles, making the case easy to carry around. While plastic, the handles are held on by three screws, and to further stabilize them, the frame itself has these metal structures to keep the handles from flexing or bending too much when you lift the case up. This small detail is really ingenious engineering on Cooler Master's part. And finally, the frame itself is held on together with rivets, so if you're a modder, you'll need to take that into account should you want to augment anything. At the front of the case, you'll find the I.O. and a large mesh section where two 120mm or 140mm fans will pull in fresh air. Want to water cool? This is also the area where you can install a 240mm radiator. Here you'll also find two hot swappable hard drive bays for either 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch hard drives. The hot swap cage uses Cooler Master's x dox system, which lets you remove and install hard drives while the computer is still on. There are also two 5.25 inch bays for optical drives or an SD card reader. The front I.O. consists of a large power button which lights up when on, and a reset button, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and two audio jacks, one for headphones and one for a microphone. The power and reset button have a nice satisfactory click sound when you use them, but the power button is a bit wobbly. After removing the front panel, you can see the half XB Evo's two pre-installed 3-pin slash Molex fans. These are pre-installed on the outside of the front panel, and it's good that there's room there for this. This way, should you be water cooling, you can put the fans on the outside while putting the radiator on the inside to accommodate for lengthier GPUs. Not water cooling and just air cooling, the same thing applies. If you have a long GPU, put the fans on the outside and you should be able to get that thing in there. That's what she said! <laughs> as far as dust filters go, the half XB Evo has two. 
One is at the front and is not separate or removable from the front panel. You'll have to remove the entire front panel to clean it, which again may prove difficult when you have a full system in the case. The other filter is at the bottom and covers the PSU. It's on rails and is easily removable. However, I found myself needing to lift the case a bit to get to the pull tab as the PSU sleeve or holder made grabbing it not that easy. There are four large plastic case feet and they lift the half XB Evo about an inch off the ground. They are lined with soft rubber padding to both keep the case from sliding around and to possibly dampen vibrations. As previously mentioned, you can remove the motherboard tray by unscrewing four non-captive thumb screws. While this is a nice feature, you may not even need to remove the motherboard tray unless you have to access the back of your motherboard because of your CPU cooler. The only other reason you may need to unscrew and move the motherboard tray is to better route cables. The HAP XB EVO supports ATX, MATX, and ITX motherboards. There are two standoffs pre-installed, and you'll need to refer to the standoff guide engraved into the case to see where to place additional standoffs for your motherboard. The standoff guide is not replicated in the user manual, which is a shame. Having said that, the guide ought to be easy enough to read if you have direct light on it or when the motherboard tray has been pulled out, which you may want to do anyway when building a PC in this case. And you'll want to use the included standoff installer thingy, that's a technical term, which lets you easily install more standoffs. When you're inserting a standoff, go and start it by hand and then use the standoff thingamajiggy to start screwing in the standoffs. Or if you have a socketed uh, screwdriver like I do with the iFixit kit, you can use that. When you're tightening the standoff, don't go too tight, just do enough to make sure that it's basically you can't twist it any longer. If you torque too hard, you can end up stripping the standoff screw and then you won't even be able to screw in your motherboard. After all the standoffs you need are in place, installing a motherboard with the tray out of the case ought to be pretty easy. Finally, I will say as one word of warning, pre-route your cables before you put the motherboard tray back into the case with the motherboard and presumably your CPU, RAM, and CPU cooler installed. In the long run, it will make for an easier overall building process of your PC. Any of the cable routing holes found on the motherboard tray are really only for smaller motherboards such as MATX or ITX. An ATX motherboard is going to essentially cover up that hole, plus if you plan on removing the motherboard tray a lot, as this will be a test bench, you're not going to want to route any cables through that hole anyway. Anyway, instead you're going to route any of the front facing cables down through the hole uh, between the two hard drive and optical drive bays and then to the sides and that will come up and over and connect into the motherboard as needed. In addition to the hot swap bays at the front, which I already talked about, there's another cage for two more hard drives, either three and a half inch or two and a half inch at the side of the case. This makes for a total of four hard drives you can install. You can access the cage by taking off the right side panel as you face the back of the case. Installation is toolless for 3.5 inch hard drives, but not 2.5 inch drives. This is definitely disappointing. One would think toolless installation and removal would be an advantageous feature with the presence of hot swap bays. Finally, should you not need them, you can remove all three drive cages as they are held in by Phillips head screws. This is great as it will mean more room for cables or should you water cool a pump and res. All three cages are held by screws that are attached at the bottom of the case. However, the front two drive cages also have screws that can be accessed by taking the front panel off and removing them from there. When it comes to GPU, CPU cooler, and PSU support in the half XB Evo, you can install GPUs up to 334 millimeters in length. This means an MSI RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio will fit, but just barely, as I've already shown you. CPU coolers with the top panel on can be 180 millimeters tall, and you can install PSUs up to a length of 180 millimeters as well, or ATX form factor. Since the PSU will be in the basement of the case, you should have plenty of room to stow your excess cables. Installing the PSU is pretty easy. Simply remove the PSU's cage's four thumb screws, again not captive, screw in the PSU into the cage and put it back into the case. Because the PSU cage juts out from the back of the case, there's more room, hence the ability to install ATX length power supplies. This is another smart design choice by Cooler Master. The half XB Evo can hold up to six fans. At the front, you can have two 120mm or 140mm fans. Should you get the mesh version like I have, you can put a 200mm fan at the top of the case. And at the rear, there is room for one 120mm fan, as well as two 80mm fans in the basement. And as already mentioned, the case comes with two 120mm fans pre-installed. If you want to liquid cool your PC with an AIO or a custom loop, you can install a 240mm radiator in the front and a 120mm radiator in the back. To make sure everything fits, I definitely recommend sticking to slim rads. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be very good mounting points for a pump or a reservoir in this case. However, you can see if any of the various screw points for the drive cages will fit a pump mounting bracket or just pull out your drill and make some of your own. Most of your cables will be hidden in the case's basement, but there are plenty of cable tie-down points spread around the half XB Evo to help keep things tidy. 
what accessories do you get? You get a manual, it's light on words but heavy on pictures, and I think Cooler Master has done a good job with the manual to show you how to install various components into the half XB Evo. The only thing I'd like to see is a repeat of the motherboard standoff guide. There's one hard drive sled for a 2.5 inch drive, and two pairs of rails for two 3.5 inch hard drives. It's kind of disappointing that there isn't an additional sled for another 2.5 inch hard drive. There's some zip ties, you also get screws for the PSU, fans, motherboard, and hard drives. You get standoffs and a standoff screw thingy, which as I previously said, that's a technical term, and this will help you insert additional standoffs. And finally, you get a motherboard speaker, which is pretty cool. Because I was looking for a case that could serve as a test bench, I focused on a few factors. First was price, as I didn't want to spend more than $120, accessibility, and finally mobility. I'm happy to say the half XB Evo checks all three of these boxes for me. It's affordable when compared to the more premium options like the Praxis Wet Bench from Primo Chill or the Open Bench Table from Streetcom. At the same time, it's also much sturdier compared to the cheaper options I looked at that are a mixture of acrylic and aluminum. The panels are easy to remove, so the case is definitely easy to access. I also have options. I can leave the case open should I need to get in it a lot, or I can close it up both to better simulate a closed case environment while testing and as a bonus to protect the components from my rude cats. Finally, the handles make carrying the case very easy, so it won't be a problem lugging it up from the basement to here when I need to use it. I honestly don't have too much negative to say other than the case does have a rather large footprint, which you'll need to take into account if you're looking at it. The thumb screws need to be captive and managing the cables isn't the easiest. While the Cooler Master Half XB Evo Land Box is showing its age, I feel it still has value and could definitely serve as a good home for your next PC. I also really hope Cooler Master updates the Half XB Evo and if they do, here are some suggestions I have. I love all the thumb screws as it makes removing the panels and motherboard tray quite easy, but please Cooler Master, make them captive. You might be able to get away with not making the PSU cover screws captive, but the screws for the three panels and motherboard tray definitely should be. Second, revise how the front panel is removed. The seven clips are okay, but it's not the smoothest removal process, and I feel they will fail at some point if the panel is removed often. Instead, change the removal method similar to how you remove the Cooler Master NR400's front panel or cases that use nubbins. Additionally, make it so the front mesh filter section can either be removed independent of or with the entire front panel. It would be cool if it was spring-loaded like the top filter in the Corsair Carbide 500R, where all you have to do is push down and then it pops up for easy removal and cleaning. Doing this would allow users to easily clean the front filter without needing to take the entire front panel off. Third, add more water cooling support. The basement serves as an ideal place for a pump, a reservoir, and even radiators. My suggestion here would be to perforate the lower halves of the side panels and incorporate mounting points for a 240 millimeter slim radiator and fans on either side of the case. This may require the case's height to be increased by a few centimeters, and you'd probably have to remove one or more of the drive cages to accommodate this as well. If Coolmaster did increase the height, they could also remove the two 80 millimeter fan points and replace them with one 120 millimeter fan point, as 120 millimeters is a much more commonly si common size than 80. Additionally, since all drive cages are removable, it would be great if the spacing for the screw spacing corresponded to pump mounting points or pump brackets like EKWB's 120 millimeter pump bracket, which can be attached to any 120 millimeter fan. Some other suggestions are to add a USB Type C port to the front I/O, make the two included fans PWM, wrap all front I/O cables so we don't have to deal with any ketchup and mustard improve the toolless hard drive to installation to better accommodate two and a half inch hard drives and make it so we can morph the five and a quarter inch cage slots to hold additional hard drives should we not install a five and a quarter inch device. Finally, should an update also have a solid top panel version, make it tempered glass and not acrylic. And that's all I have to say about Cooler Master's Half XB Evo Land Box. What do y'all think about this case? If you own one, let me know what your thoughts are on it down below. Thanks for watching everybody. Hit that like button if you liked what you saw or if you found this video helpful and feel free to share any questions or comments you have down below. You can show your support for the channel by clicking the subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification icon so you don't miss out on any future content. And hey, while you're here, why don't you check out some of the other videos I've made. I'm Seth, and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.